In the world of video game, this controller is iconic. The original Nintendo Entertainment System controller wasn't the most ergonomic, wasn't the most comfortable, kind of dug in your hands a little bit, but man, I've got such fond memories playing different games with this over the years. Well, the team over at Retrobit have kind of taken that philosophy not like digging in your hands and such, but like the fact that people love that controller and come out with a new wireless version for the 21st century. And that is the Originate wireless controller here. And the cool thing about this too, is there's three different color variants. There's this one here that kind of looks like the Game Boy. There's one that looks like the original Nintendo controller and a third kind of unique design in and of itself. And this is designed not only though to work with the NES, like the top loader that I have here, but also with the Switch and other USB enabled devices. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna take a look at it, we're gonna test out some games. Let's go get started. So taking a look at the box, one of the first things I gotta just say is I love the design aesthetic they went with this. This reminds me of something you would have seen on the shelves right next to an original NES. I mean, it's got between the gold lettering, the red header, and this is just mwah, chef's kiss perfect. Now, this is also one of their Platinum Collection controllers, and the nice thing about this is the fact, first of all, it's really budget-friendly, and you're still getting that Platinum Collection. So what is that? This is their better quality as far as fit, finish, molds, the membranes and everything that go in there. This is overall designed to be a better quality controller than a lot of the others that are out there. I dare say it's designed to compete head-to-head -head with 8-Bit Doe, but the nice thing about Retrobit, unlike 8-Bit Doe, if you have questions, if you have concerns, they respond to emails, they respond to social posts, they engage with the community, they are members of the retro gaming community. Where 8-Bit Doe, yeah, not so much. So uh, on the face here, you can see compatible with the NES, Switch, and USB-enabled devices, and includes V2 receivers for NES and USB ports. Uh, on the side, more of the same, just the logos and everything. And on here, it, it's the Nintendo font, which I love, compatible with the NES Switch and USB enabled devices. Let's take a look at the back. Here again, you can see it does have both of the dongles represented on the back here. Additional ZL and ZR buttons towards the top right here. Uh, it does have turbo switches, so very similar to what is on the turbo graphics. I like to see that. Features home and screenshot buttons, concave, A and B buttons, uh, compatible with the NES switch and USB, which we talked about just a little bit ago. Uh, familiar shape controller with two face buttons and four shoulder buttons. Additional turbo switches for rapid fire inputs. Yeah, I'm gonna try this on the Switch Online Super NES to see how it works. Um, let's see, includes three foot, one meter USB-C charge cable, utilizes their latest V2 chip. And that's basically as far as their 2.4 gigahertz protocol that they're using. It just makes sure that you've got the best performance, lag, latency, delay, so on and so forth. Just slice it open there and take a look underneath. You know what? I like this a lot. I like the way that this comes out of the box. It's just not wrapped with like styrofoam, that styrofoam kind of envelope for lack of a better term. Um, this is a really nice presentation. I dig it. So there you can see the L and the R and the ZLZR. Yeah, concave buttons here. I had a lot of people ask why concave versus convex. Uh, this is the way the original Super Nintendo, or I'm sorry, the original NES was. I will say the top kind of slick. Um, wasn't exactly expecting that. There's your player indicator on the bottom. Um, it does have the Originate logo on the back along with serial number. Um, the one thing that I'm, I won't say that I'm concerned, but I'm curious with is if I'm playing and I accidentally push down on L and R, will it act as A and B as I'm playing a game? So that'll be interesting to see. Here is the dongle for the NES, so looking good there. And then the V2 USB dongle. Now these do have ports on the side here. And then let's take a look. Well, you won't need one on the USB port because you can just plug it right into a computer. So if and when there are ever firmware updates, you can easily go ahead and update the firmware right through the side there. I like the fact that it's a USB-C cable too. That's a good thing to see. Uh, let's take a look at the instruction manual. And should be the biggest thing is how do you, you know, does it auto detect or do you have to pair? Let's take a closer look. All right, so looking here, connect a receiver into the controller's or the console's controller port and power it on. 
Once powered, the receiver will flash slowly if unpaired. Press and hold the pairing button on the receiver for a few seconds until it flashes rapidly. So is that what? That's what this is on the back of the NES dongle, is your pairing. And then we've got just the regular pairing button there. Uh, press start on the controller to power it on and once more to pair a, uh, uh, to pair it. So start and then start again. Once paired, both controller and receiver will have their lights remain on upon your next play session. Uh, you only need to power on the controller with start to connect it to the console. So that's nice. You don't have to pair it each and every time. It does walk you through some additional button mapping on here as well. Um, and then you can program your own kind of macros if you wanted to. So I am excited about this. Oh, one thing, let's compare this. I am very excited about this, but before we get to gameplay, let's compare it to an actual NES controller. All right, so taking a look, here is the Originate, and then here is the Origin Null. <laughs> and as you can see, you know, they look fairly similar in size. We've also got our calipers here. We're gonna measure a few things just to see. Uh, Width-wise, on the original controller, we are at, let's call it 123.5 millimeters. And on the Originate, we are at 123.2, so slightly narrower that way. And I'm gonna try to go around the triggers. So we're at 53.2 millimeter that way versus 53.5, so a little bit uh, shorter top to bottom here too. D-pad, we are at 20.5 millimeter versus 23.2. Did I look at that right? Let's double check that. 20.6, 20.5 versus 23.1. So larger D-pad than the original. Let's take a look at the buttons here. We're going to go widest point we're at 10.1 millimeter versus 10.1 10.2 so buttons look to be the exact same height and everything um, so that is good uh, there are some subtle differences I will say that this does feel light it, it it could use a little bit of extra heft in here, uh, but overall it does feel pretty good in the hand. Until I measured, until I really looked at it, I didn't notice how much larger that D-pad is than the original. So uh, let's go ahead, we're gonna charge this up, let's play some games. All right, so we are starting out here. I do have it paired to my NES top loader, and this is actually using a 60 to 72 pin adapter. We're gonna try some Parodius Da because I think the turbo is actually gonna come in really handy here. I'm going to turn the turbo on on B right away, so let's see what it does. That works fantastic. Now, for those of you not familiar with the Proteus series, it's, as you can see here, looks like Gradius, doesn't it? Well, it's one of those that it takes and builds upon the Gradius series and some of the other series, Twin B is as well, and kind of takes it to a different level. And this is one of my favorite games for the Famicom, quite honestly. And we've got our double shot here. Oh, I had Turbo on on A, and I did not want that. D pad feels quite good. And again, button presses are working great, as is the uh, the turbo functionality. The great thing about this game, too, is it's not very expensive, but it's so, so good. Now, I will say I wasn't expecting the oversized D-pad, but now that it's here... Oh, and I flew into something there. Um, you know what? It feels good. You know what? Let's do this. Let's try some Punch-Out. Now, the interesting thing about this version of Punch-Out is this is, again the Famicom version. And just for reference how I'm playing this and everything, this is through my NES top loader, and it is HDMI modded with one of Kevtris's HDMI mods that I wish they were still available. Press the button, a button responds. That's exactly what I want to see here. Sit down. 
I mean, it is only Glass Joe, so I mean, it's not super challenging, but still, it's one of those where you still just want to see how everything works. Sit down! Yeah, button presses and everything feel fantastic. I'm, I'm really liking the performance. And you are done now. Now, one thing I can confirm, too, from the manual, it says just hit the start button once you're paired, and you can go ahead and get paired again as I've been changing games. That's worked perfectly. Uh, Batman, uh, this is one of the best games for the NES. Yeah, I mean, all the button presses are doing exactly what they should be doing. Batman feels like he's playing terrifically. Such a great soundtrack, too. That's the other thing. I always thought it was kind of crappy in this, though, when you... When you threw the Batarang, if you caught it, I always felt like you should be able to get another Batarang. Let's see if we can do the wall jumps up here. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely loving how this is playing. This is this is perfect. Oh, that less so perfect. So I will say I did try it with the Xbox. Didn't work. I tried it with the Wii U did not work so we do have it hooked here up to the switch and we're going to go down into the controller screen and as you can see it does read it just as a standard usb type controller so that was the home button to get us back there d-pad works great through here we're going to go into the nes online service and check out some of the games in here let's dive into some double dragon great game dude so again Button presses feel great. And if LZR brings up that menu, so great there. We'll go back to the game selection. Let's try let's try some Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, once again, everything's feeling quite good here. Did I go too far? Yep, I did. Yep, button presses here again feel great. We'll go to game selection again. We'll try some Gradius. Pause. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B, A, start. Yeah, just like Parodius, this feels fantastic. And we're going to kind of fly through the, the uh, switch a little bit just because we've already kind of shown some of it. Okay, so we're going to go to the home button. I'm going to go to the Famicom and see how the Famicom games check out on this. Let's do some Mario Land 2. So what do I think of the Originate overall? Um, I think it's very comfortable. They've done enough to the ergonomics so that it feels familiar but they've also updated as well to increase the comfort level. The The fact that the edges of the controller are rounded versus the sharp edges on the original NES controller, I think does make this more comfortable. It feels responsive. I'm, I'm absolutely digging this. Oh, I got smushed there. We'll try another game. Um, button presses feel very, very good on here. I'm, I'm overall liking that. Um... Uh, um, yeah, it's very comfortable, easy to pair. Um, it saves from when you go from one, you know, turn power cycle on and off and whatnot. I really appreciate the fact that this is USB-C. I, I appreciate the fact that um, they've been making a more concerted effort to do that. Oh, something new to play. What do we have? Fire Emblem. Don't care. That's right. Don't care about Fire Emblem. Yeah, overall, I'd say the build quality feels great, too. That's, you know, another thing on here is that, I mean, it feels decent. Now, I didn't realize at first glance that the D-pad was larger than the original, but now that I see it and play it, like, I don't dislike it. You know, I don't know if you would have handed me the controller, like, blind taste test-wise, and, you know, asked me to point out, you know, if the D-pad was any different. I may have noticed it but hard to say and now that's just using the regular you know buttons to go ahead and hit but this is fantastic i mean it's playing on everything here that i've thrown it at as far as what it, what it was advertised to play with it works with the switch and it works with original hardware um i have not played around with clone consoles yet um one thing I'm going to do, we're going to dive into the Genesis really quick. Uh, 
we're gonna we're gonna try Sonic the Hedgehog just because it's a single button game. Uh, but I'm really really happy with the overall, the fit, the finish, the performance, just everything. I'm I'm really happy with this. Yep. Yeah. That is like it shouldn't work, but it does, and I love it. Now, the thing that m makes it so that this can work is the fact that Sonic, you only used one button when you played. You know, it didn't matter what button you hit. It was always jump, or in this case, it's jump or dash if you're pressing down. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, battery life seems very, very good, too. That's another thing. Uh, I'm just... I cannot say enough good things about this. Uh, the only minor thing, like I say, is the fact that it did not work or would not pair with my Xbox Series S. Um, so for that, you know, kind of a bummer, but not completely unexpected either. So um, I've got more games to play here, but we're going to wrap things up. If you couldn't tell, I really like this controller. It's well balanced. It's got great battery life, very good performance. Overall, like the best way that I think of this is it's a turbo graphics controller designed for the NES it is really the way that I feel about it even though this has a larger d-pad uh, than what that controller has but with the the turbo fire buttons on it definitely something I really really like uh, overall it worked with everything it was designed to like I mentioned switch and NES did not work with like the Xbox when I tried it through USB also did not work with the Wii U through USB but overall really really nice controller now if you want to pick some of these up i will have a link down below to where you can pick them up through rondo products the cool thing on there is if you use promo code rocksolid 10 you can save 10 percent off of most items on the website not quite sure if these are eligible for it yet but they should have all three color variants up on the website too now if you do want to check out some of the other controller reviews we've done from retrobit or check out our videos on their Double Dragon and Battletoads games. I'll have those linked for you right here on screen. Go ahead, check them out. Let me know what you think.